Humanoid bots are coming. There's no two ways about it. Everyone agrees. The only question that people still disagree about is when is it going to happen? Is it going to be in a year or 10 years or 10,000 years? At some point it will happen, but we got to figure out when it is. And we're going to have a chat about that. Uh, my good friend Herbert from Brighter is joining me. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, oh, oh. So, Herbert, uh, I've seen a lot of people saying, I've seen the demos. Uh, I've been seeing them for 20, 30 years. These are still at least 10 years out. Uh, yeah. How soon do you think we'll see a humanoid bot for sale? Whoa, I don't know. Might be 10 years out. Actually, no, it's already for sale today. This is exactly today. the point. People say, oh, it's not going to be able to do useful work. Well, dude. Digit's already being used today in Amazon's factories. It's already being used. Um, there's a lot of humanoid bots that's already been, you know, pick and place. It's very simple. And uh, not just pilots. They're actually physically being used. But there are two um, companies I know of that are already selling their bots now. One is called Fourier. It's about one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000, uh, though, and it's only for university. But this one here, Unitree. Unitree is selling their bots right now. You can go to their website, and pay sixteen thousand U.S. dollars for this one, but they've already previously were selling another version uh, for ninety thousand, and they were selling their dogs uh, for I think two thousand six hundred dollars. And of course, the other one I just came to mind, of course, is Boston Dynamics. They've been selling their dog Spot also for security guards. And so, if you're talking about humanoid bots, though. Here is one that they're pricing for sixteen thousand dollars. Do you want to play the video so people sure, can watch sure. us? Yeah, I turn off the sound. That, yeah, yep. I would mention that the Boston Dynamics one, a spot isn't a human; it's man's best no. friend. But here you go. Yeah, that's right. That's so a what dog. What are we looking at? So first of all, it's a very, very small, by the way, in their website, they say it's like four feet something. But actually, when we saw a photo of it in the actual um, conference, it's, it's, it looks like a three footer, but that's why they can bring the price down. Um, just multi joints, you know, it's, it's it doesn't actually have the hands. Um, they, in this case, they make it look like hands. But uh, the, one of the things that Unitree is really focused on is the walking. And it seems like a lot of the Chinese uh, bot vendors, they really focus on uh, walking. I think that that's the government has been, um, you know, incenting them to be able to do that. So the Unitree's previous videos show them being able to run the fastest of anybody. This is crazy. The, the amount of dexterity, the degrees of freedom, look how tiny this thing is. And that's why you can see this actually pretty short. Um, it's got the three fingers uh, digits, three digits only which is actually an odd choice, uh, but they have a partnership also with NVIDIA. So you can see here at NVIDIA's simulation engine to be able to first do it there and then be able to then show it. And, you know, we've seen many videos already where just by two pinchers, you can accomplish a lot of things. You can fold clothes, you can open up beer, beer bottles. In this case, he actually made it look cool. Now with three digits, you know, maybe a little bit more than the two, but certainly not going to be better than a 22 degree of freedom human hand like, um, um, you know. No, but this is available today. And that is pretty huge, I would say. Uh, why is this not getting more press? Yeah, I, I think it's very similar to, um, to, to Fourier, which is it's available but when you buy it, it doesn't do anything. And then you have to, you know, pay a lot of money and a lot of customization still to try to actually train it to do anything. So this is available, but it's more like a toy. It's more like something that, you know, research labs would use. And then they have to work very closely with that company to try to, you know, have it do something that's useful. Develop uh, practical applications. It's still R&D at this point, yeah. But they're trying to show that they're leaders. They're trying to show that we can create different kind of form factors, very large unit trees. Um, we've got videos of things. Uh, actually, I won't be able to play the other videos, though, that we've got here because we can slow down what this one can do. So as you know, what's happening, right, is all of these bot vendors are dropping these videos. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, they've not said anything about that this is autonomous. All of this that you're looking at is teleoperated. There's a human right. out there they did not say that this was autonomous. And so one thing that in um, Unitree 
is is able to focus on is the actual form factor and you know here we are we're making it but they're still missing that component of training capabilities right so yeah this is their announcement it's a humanoid agent they did say ai avatar they did say that and then they do have a partnership with N nvidia and so that is something they're working on but um yeah you know they're want, trying to one-up each other right they want to show and so unitary did drop a video about a month ago showing that they're the fastest running bot that's out there um unlock unlimited sports potential i have no idea why you know and that's uh trans loss in translation but extra large joint movement angle 23 to 34 joints force control of dexterous hands manipulation of all things it sounds great but again three digit hands ain't you know it's going to limit what you can do with that um imitation and reinforcement learning driven but it's going to keep the cost down yeah especially early on yep. it's going to make the training simplified there yep. are advantages you know do you, their first version was 90 grand this one is a fraction of that yeah exactly that's exactly right these are you know um design choices well i i found this image online just kind of interesting how you know it seems to be everybody's going to copy tesla and that's the right thing to do i mean it's you know it's it, tesla has you know done so much research trying to figure this out and uh they've done this so this was um you know the announcement that we just went through this is called the g1 and mm -hmm. um compact lightweight 35 kilograms for easy handling and that's another choice, right? Going small, but mm -hmm. you have to ask yourself, what can it carry? You know, uh, what can it actually do? But there's a role. There's going to be a role for every single bot. Um, this is what this is smart for them to go with this small one, right? Just and I would point out approach. the Boston Dynamics bot, which was sold to many, many customers, including SpaceX, didn't have built-in features like you would want from ChatGPT. What it had was an API that you could program it to do things. It, it was limited by your ability to tell it what to do. But a bot like this, forget about the training, which the customer will need to do. What kind of tasks could you see this robot performing already? Again, they don't show anything about any tasks that it can do. Everything we just saw was a demo. Um, it could probably do little things, right? Like pick up things and move things around. Um, the nice thing about the small bots, there's a lot of people who, who are trying to go to consumer and try to go to the home. The smaller the bot, the more, the, the more less, the more effective that is, right? Or the more tailored that is for the home, less likely to hurt anybody. And it can just, you know, pick up your beer and bring it back to you, maybe things like that. So this sure. was November of last year, right? So six months ago, and they showed that they're bot that they showed off was a $90,000 H1 version two. And this is what it looked like. They didn't even have a head yet. Um, you know, and then, uh, th this is, you know, they showed off this video, which is the bot was dancing. This was evolution three. And so the, the, how quickly this has improved from November to March. And then a few months later, they dropped that video. They've already also selling this dog for $1,600, tax and shipping costs excluded. <laughs> uh, they're just trying to show you that, you know, you can actually go ahead and buy a dog right now. And it's pretty cool. It, again, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it, it looks awesome. And it, you know, it's like a toy though, right? Again, show me what it can do. There's other companies that actually have video cameras that's actually, you know, for security that can actually recognize intruders or locked and unlocked doors. They can know how to, where to go like autonomously it knows mm -hmm. your, your facility, your grounds, the, you know, we don't know what this can do. So this is, they're just showing you how, how, you know, the hardware and sure. the ones in red here are the, um, uh, the robot companies from, you know, kind of China and Asian countries. And then the ones in the light blues up here are from Europe, the North American co uh, companies as well. And so what we do is tracking, okay, great. You've dropped the bot. You've, you've, you've shown that you're actually trying to sell it and you're trying to do a commercial, you know, instead of an R and D only you've shown that it can walk. You've shown mm -hmm. that it's got hands. And so right now we don't consider pinchers hands. Um, again, I'm not saying that it can't sell, I'm not saying it can't do anything. It will do a lot of things, but hands really open up 
you know, just an amazing number of job opportunities that the tasks, right, that you will never be able to do with just pinchers. Um, demo useful work. They've not shown that yet. They've not shown the LLM of voice integration with OpenAI. They've not shown any autonomous work at this point, and they've not uh, announced any pilots and deploying bots. But yes, I, they I are would say that this. this, yes, I would say that this has, it, it, it looks like it has no utility, but I would argue that Spot from Boston Dynamics also appeared to have no utility, but we've yeah. seen applications. We've seen uh, him do things like uh, at SpaceX, uh, examine a failed yeah. launch site. We've seen it uh, used by bomb squads to uh, approach and examine parcels. So yeah. the fact that I can't dream it up means that in the comments, I need you guys to tell me what could this bot do today? And one application I can think of is it would be great to give him a laser scanner and have him stand at the front, uh, allowing guests in by scanning yeah. their QR codes. Yeah. It would be pointless. It would be a fun exercise and little more. But in terms of practical stuff, like you said, in a security application, it can patrol a perimeter in places that the cameras may not be able to see. It can physically check to make sure all doors are secured uh, and it can log that. It can if you say someone we think someone came in through this door at this time, you can yeah. check. Well, three minutes earlier, the door was definitely locked and we logged it. So all of this is exciting. Uh, I would like to point out to you guys who don't know this, uh, Herbert has been working very closely with Dr. Scott Walter. Uh, he's on X as Going Ballistic 5, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and also CERN Basher. Um, and they have put together a number of resources. So if you are a bot company and you need expertise, uh, you can talk to me and I'll tell you, no, just talk to Herbert because he's, <laughs> he, he knows because there's a reason I'm interviewing him on this topic and not the other way around. Herbert, I do want to thank you for giving me so generously of your time and uh, coming on and making us all a little bit brighter. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody else, you know, like, subscribe, do the usual thing. Stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots once you're on deployment in the real world.